Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't think that's Talking about <laughs> this guy took skiing trips, posted on his Instagram. He took skiing matching sweaters. Mm. He got the matching sweater matching stage. Matching sweaters, dog. Oh, no. Why would they do it? Bro, because it's getting you ready, dog. Yeah, no! Oh, uh, you're supposed to the fact that you're rich right now, that you have all this money put back, and I, I feel you trying to get like you, buddy. Rich, rich Mr. Banks. <laughs> I am trying to have two camera angles. Mm. I know it's coming, it's coming. But anyways, what is good, people? We're back once again. This is another special episode of Location. So right now, we are not tackling the sports. In fact, we tackle the culture. Mm -hmm. And I figure why not go ahead and start with something that's pressing on people's minds. You know, Michael B. Jordan, Lori Harvey. Kind of give us a little rundown on the situation, Ron. Let us know what took place. Uh, and just give us a brief summary, as best you can. All my, all my players out there, we have a fallen soldier. We have one beating near the side, seeing cars, seeing balloons, the whole nine. Okay? Without remorse. So, Mr. Creed himself, the legend Michael B. Jordan, he is dating Steve Harvey's daughter, Lori Harvey. She's a very well known, very beautiful girl. She's known for dating. Uh, Future, notoriously known for Dave Future, he still to this day throws subliminal shots at her. And um, she she dated uh, a couple other guys in the game. She she was spotted out on a date one time with Drake, but I guess it didn't go like much. Wasn't there also Meek Mill, Rick Ross as well? Yeah, yeah. So there's some guys. She, she's made rounds, you know. So she's made a stop at Michael B. Jordan. Look kind of promising. He's Michael B. Jordan is a class act. To be real, he, this guy is. Mature guy, he's a class act, he's a professional. He's a guy you wouldn't mind, as me personally, like having sisters, I wouldn't mind my sister bringing home, okay? Put it like that. You know, he's, he's a well, clean yeah, cut, you clean know? Clean cut guy. Good, and, good um, reputation, not like. Nothing. So, with that being said, all this that, that, that occurred is so, is so surprising. So, Michael B. Jordan apparently was, he's had such a great time, so in love. This process has been going so good. Now he's ready to apparently tie the knot. At least make an engagement commitment, all right? You know what Lori Harvey says? She says, nah, uh uh. I uh, ain't leaving these streets yet. Not yet. Not she yet. said, not yet, buddy. And she said, not only am I not am I not leaving the streets yet, I'm about to leave you in the process of me not leaving the streets. Whoa! Whoa! Wait, wait, wait. I don't think that's Time out. <laughs> this guy took skiing trips, posted on his Instagram. He took skiing matching sweaters. Mm. He got the matching sweater matching stage. sweaters, dog. Oh, no. Bro, okay, bro, Michael B. Jordan. Michael, so, Michael, goes to say the Michael, question. Michael, Michael. When are you to know that a girl is to be trusted? When are you to know that it's time to make the commitment. Well, for me, this is what I Whatever. say. So just in general, any red flags that you should see beforehand. Yes. Going to take yes. you to that level. Yes. There are questions you can ask before you ask, can you marry me? They can tell well, you if she will marry questions. you. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. First of all, can you cook? Big thing to me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. First off, in this situation, your reputation. The fact of the matter is she has made the rounds. Okay. She Travis, has moved look, on and I'm all. thinking, on. I'm, it's 2022. Nobody's going to come to you a virgin. I'm sorry. No one's saying I'm sorry. That. I'm sorry. No one's saying Okay, that. well, I'm not perfect. Imagine the bodies I come coming to a girl with, okay? Look, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, okay, it starts with, it starts with fundamentals, foundational things. Cooking, can you cook? And I think a lot of times when you get that aesthetic of like, I'm a boss, like I'm a this, I'm a dad. No, baby, like, but you can't cook. Okay. You don't know, you don't know when to be quiet. You mm -hmm. don't know how to allow a man okay. to. Okay. Are you willing to provide and put a meal on your man's stomach? 
Okay, do you not know how far that will go? Putting a meal on your man's stomach? <laughs> when he comes home from work? When he gets done doing the yard? A woman for me is handling your own, but knowing how to cater to a man's need. When he gets done fixing your fucked up brakes? All right, Cam Newton. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. A, a little, a little hamburger helper and salad won't help, won't hurt a nigga. Some strong enough. Okay. All right. So, all right. Can you cook? Number two. Number two. Do you know what cheating really is? Okay. Mm. Cheating is not just having sex with the op oh, with, with someone else. Here we go. Come on now. Lay it on me. Lay it on me. <laughs> okay. Cheating to me in my book is another person that is not your partner currently feeling as if they have a great chance of not only having a commitment with you, but having sexual intercourse with you. Okay? And you know why a guy will only think that way? I'm a guy, so I would know, and I've been in situations. So, the uh, only way a guy would think that he has a chance to even bang a girl or to even have some type of commitment with a girl, she must be giving him some type of flirty vibes. Oh, 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 smiling. Oh, oh, you're so this, you're so that, that. How's it oh, Gucci? That's what, that's what fuels. Fishing. That's what fuels all these thoughts in a man in a young man's head when he thinks, okay, I have a future with this woman. I have a chance. a chance. A chance. I have a chance. A golden ticket. And that's all you need. <laughs> Just one little chance. That door don't gotta be this much, but this open. Just cracked. Crack, crack right it open. Over. Little air seeping through this all this all a real player need. That's all it takes. It's coming from a player. It's up. all that's a real player takes. need. I need that air seeping through. And I'm Cracking that door through the door, Travis. You know what? I don't want to. I don't want to spend too long because I know you have a lot to say about this. So tell me what you have to think about this about this okay. situation. Right. Everything, bro. This is great. Well, I mean, I, it's almost hard to put into words because when you see, and it, I don't want to. I'm not tying these two together. Understand that I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm really not. But in the same way. Not in the same way, but in a way, Michael B. Jordan got emasculated just like how Will Smith did on, on in the public eye. Now, it obviously wasn't caught on video and all that, but it's basically public record. Social media is public mm -hmm. record. Everyone knew basically immediately after this rejection took place that it happened. How do you recover from that, bro? Especially, I'm sorry, you can gloss over it. I can't. When a, considering his track record, dating females and then he he took the chance did all this for this girl and you can argue with whatever you want michael b george is the most successful person she's ever been with like no question like in terms of money and status actors are on another level than rappers i'm sorry we can debate that all day but it's really not okay but, bro, for you to not understand this girl's background, it's like, what, what was you asking for? You were asking for this. Matching sweaters, Terrence? He thought he was out of the mold. He wasn't a rapper, okay? He, he wasn't you like... You can't change. It's just like when females get into a relationship with a man and be like, oh, I can change the man. Oh, I can make him a certain way. No. If someone shows you who they are, after so long, you have to believe them. Otherwise, it's just on you at that point. So really and truly, you know, bravo to her. Because she clearly isn't. She seems to think that she's still a free agent and has many more rounds to make. Maybe. I don't know. And make this be known. But, she, she has a pops that is very wise. And he knows his ways. He's, he's, he lived a, he lived a long time. He knows his ways around these things. And so I'm but, not completely oblivious to the thought that Steve Harvey does have some type of, you know, you know, chime in on like what's going on. I'm not saying he has some type of like decision of what's who she talks to and all that, but I'm sure don't, he's an don't, influential part of her don't, life. Don't still, don't don't so. not the fact that this guy could completely they can completely have a, a great daughter daddy relationship and you we all know how deep Steve Harvey can get. We all know the sense he has. We all know who, who can tell you how to think like a man, right? Okay, so 
maybe Steve Harvey saw something that we didn't see. That maybe he's seeing something that and Michael B. Jordan that the that the you know people from the outside looking in like us who says it like me who says we'll bring him we we'll, we won't mind our sister bringing him home and all that. I mean, no one ever knows what happens behind closed doors, but the same goes for her. I mean, let's not sit here and be unfair or anything like that because. If anything, all we can judge is from the outside. That's all we can do for right now. And her track record looks more shaky, but the other thing is, it's like, hmm. you have to just question, what is she there for? Is she there to, you know, get the clout raised up a little bit? That is what it's about today. You know, you, you popping up in social media is a whole long time being in a relationship with Michael B. Jordan. Don't tell me that didn't raise her status. If you want to be honest, bro, you got to really know what girls is there for when you get into the relationship. Look, some girls ain't trying to build with you. They not trying to change into something that you think that you envision they could become. Some girls ain't there for that. Same for dudes. Works both ways. One thing, the credit I have to give to Lori Harvey is she's been consistent. No matter who she's mm-hmm. been with in the game. You know? And this is why I have to give to her. She, she's Talk showing her. her pattern that she will be the same who she is. She will choose her and her freedom mm-hmm. over any man. And she's proven that. She's proven that. So Michael yeah. B. Jordan, if you this wise guy that we all have portrayed you to be, this this intelligent, you know, great looking guy, here's what it is. You know, the guy's- Handsome you know, man. You know, God damn. Here's what it is. You know, Keep it real. he's Creed, okay? <laughs> Look, man. You got not just Michael B. Jordan, every all young men out there, young men, old men, whoever, whoever's yeah. out there in the game still a free agent. Keep your P's and Q's. Be on your P's and Q's because you know why? Yeah, you, know. you know why? It can be a, a split. You can be one day in ski in ski sweaters at, at the Colorado skiing, loved up, dubbed up, talking about a family. The next day you can be on the E-news. In the bottom of a bottle. You're going to be on E-news. At the Being the biggest scrub ever. Hotel. That's where he was at. He was at a motel. Know who you're talking to. Know what she wants from you. And can she cook? <laughs> okay. Well. Oh, 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 oh. Now, we, we're on, you know, this, this subject right now, right? So let's say, and won't have it for this situation, but let's say just if it was a regular situation, you know, man and woman get together, long standing relationship, like it goes pretty far, but it never takes it to that next level, like sealing the deal like we was just talking about, break it off, it's done. After that, can men and women truly be friends in that type of situation? Or even if you dumb it down, if you've been with a girl, just like as your girlfriend, can you truly be friends with her afterward? And it's all good. Being naturally a man, I'm not gonna lie to you. When you encounter a beautiful woman that has beautiful features, it, oh my God. God, I'm going to admit, look, I'm going to admit as a man, my God, it is so hard to draw that line, especially when she's friendly and down to earth and so accepting and have a lot of common. I know, guys, I know it's guys with wives that kind of in a situation and don't know how to handle it. Like, they're like, wow. Grass is always greener. That's why you see so many niggas cheat on their wives. Know who you are. Remember who you were. Keep that in mind. Remember, you the man, okay? Get a woman that is submissive, not in a bad, but submissive to a point to where she knows that I have to consider your perspective. I have to consider what you want, what you like. I have to consider if you uh maybe would want a home-cooked meal every now and then. So would you be able to be friends with them after you've been with them for so long and then it's over? I could if if we actually sat down and talked about that and really just got to the bottom of it, but but I think that that's 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 wishful thinking. Let's keep it a hundred. It's possible. That's wishful thinking. It's possible. So you telling me, okay, I'm leave. and then after that, there's no lingering feelings, really. Okay, because when you're just friends, there's nothing more than that. Y'all is just friends. 
normally in those situations, there's going to be some type of lingering something there that obviously, you know, y'all know each other better than most people will. So, so it's it gets a little complicated. You're there. telling me Leo DiCaprio and Kate Winsley, the two off of Titanic, right? you telling me those two, the chemistry they had and the sparks that flew on that movie with between them two? You telling me that it wasn't, it didn't take everything in them to not hook up off camera? Now, we know, for all we know, that could have happened. We don't know that. I don't know. We'll never know. But, for all we know, that man Leo went to that whole set, that whole three, five hour movie, which probably was in reality, probably about half a year, maybe a year to record. He went through all of that with through, through that Kate Winslet, that woman, that pre beautiful, beautiful woman. You had to build that bomb with her for that long. And you telling me you drew the line? You kept it at that? That's a see, pro. That's, I feel like that's a pro. Now, I that's see, a pro. That's, that's where you're starting to get into the just, in general, can men and women just be friends? Because like, I've heard of guys, I've no, heard no, of no, actors no, on no. TV on successful shows and movies who end up hooking up in real life because that chemistry hit so hard on camera. Did but, they have to? Okay. Jennifer I'm Anderson, not I'm Jennifer, not Anderson really and Brad, that, Jennifer Anderson and, Brad, and Brad Pitt. Okay. They had a movie together first, then they hooked up after. The chemistry, they couldn't, they couldn't draw the line. Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie. It's so many like, more. It's yeah, it's, it's like, a more I think about. Down the and list. yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, on the same token, Will Smith, Jada Pinkett, is, Mama, and Ali movie. Okay. At the same time, these niggas is professionals or whatever. I'm sure. The major that's probably more of the minority in terms of the majority. Cause how many it may seem like a lot of those. Tom couples, Holland, but Zendaya. If, but if you go through every single movie and compare how many men and females are attached to each other in those roles, compared to they end up together afterward, it's gonna be a lot more of those that don't as opposed to these that do. But I'm just saying I think more the proximity thing has has something to do with it. If you're just shooting this one-off project and then, you know, it's over and done, then that that might be fine and then you may not, you know, ever reach that point where you feel something. But if you're... It's it's harder when you become in close contact with a female, in my mm -hmm. mind, over long periods of time in whatever setting it is. Work, home, just if you live in the same area, stuff like that. It's harder... To not eventually develop some type of attraction, as opposed to if it's just like a one-off thing, okay. And, nice. and let me tell you, fellas, the girl is feeling it just as much as you are most times. I don't think men and women can be friends. That's my stance. You know, you, they can't. They no, can. No, no, can. no, no, no. You want me to tell you why? It, Sing, it, it can, makes... can, can single men and women be friends? Probably not. That's the one I'm long. asking. Not for long. That's what I'm. Not it, for long. Yeah, it will never stay Stuff like that. Gonna, the, either the man or the woman. There's gonna, gonna be one up. night when you're gonna catch someone vulnerable. Someone's gonna be talking about their problems because y'all are friends. Yeah. And then it's just gonna take it just that one that little turn. too far. And nine, nine times out of ten, that guy's gonna take it there. The guy's gonna. The guy's gonna be. He's the one that's gonna take it there, cause shoulder the crown. Cause generally tomorrow. the female has has more control than the guy, but that's, that's what y'all really don't understand, females. It's like y'all really have the whole y'all have the control in in the dynamic for the most part. But you know, so is it necessary to get married in life? Yourself. Do you feel like you can go in life and just you just do you feel it's healthy and you feel it's goodwill to really go through your life? Without putting that ring on somebody's finger. Well, see, that's more. Uh, mm. See, that's where we get into. Mm. It gets a little sticky, because I don't believe marriage is necessarily needed. To be honest, the reason why marriage is such a big thing is because it provides the more stable home for children. You know what I'm saying? Because that's really and truly your legacy. That's your seed. You pass it on. They live through the generations. Whatever. But marriage is like, come on, bro. How many marriages like really succeed? To be honest, like you hear of a lot that do, Some but do. divorce rates like have climbed for decades. That has remained unchanged, and that continues to this day. When we empower both genders to feel like they can make it on their own, do what they want, we're not stuck in the past in those traditional roles. That's gonna happen. And honestly, I like that. It's fine if you don't feel. 
That same way you used to feel when you got married, you should leave. Period. No one should stick through and be unhappy for the sake of a child and stuff like that. And I don't know if that seems fucked up. But if you stay like that, eventually that's going to rub off on the kid anyway. And honestly, that'll probably be more detrimental than y'all having to split time. And if y'all really got y'all shit worked out, that can actually work. I'm not saying it's the most optimal, but it can work. Okay? So... It's really more about, marriage is more about the kids aspect. I personally don't believe you have to get married. As long as you got well, an understanding I feel, with whoever that female is, yeah. females, if you do end up, you know, having multiple children with whatever, even if children ain't involved, that's fine. You don't need some paper to, you know, signify I what I feel marriage has gotten too financially centered. You know, because is it first, not a contract? Pretty much, you know. That is what it is. Prenup, prenuptials agreements and all that, bro. This has got too government based, financially based, and that's 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 the problem with everything now. Everything's getting, everything is linked to the government these days, and it's like my gosh, for a country that's so government, you know, you know, free from like, you know, a country that that's really built itself on like. You know, government agitation, government involvement, you know, state government getting too involved in things. My gosh, the government is so linked to everything now. So, you know, getting married is pretty much you sacrifice a half of your half of your wealth. Whatever wealth you have, half of it is belongs to them. And prenuptial, prenuptial agreements, I'm not that clear on those, but from what I hear, it's a do or die type of shit. You better know what you're doing. You better know who you with. Before you sign it, and right, because uh, because Stephen cause, cause Jackson, because when, when you sign yeah. it, when you sign it, that statement "What's mine is yours" it comes completely true. Hey, and shout out to Stephen Jackson. I want to shout out to that man because he talked about how he was this close from marrying this girl, and he thought it was the one. He was fully in love, all that, and he gave her months. He presented the prenup months in advance. It literally had to get to the wedding day. One hour before the ceremony, and he had to press this chick, and she was still bullshitting, and he called it off because she wouldn't sign it. She kept making excuses. All of that. You have to respect that man because clearly she was up to some funny business. Mm -hmm. If y'all really love each other, it's no thing because you're not even thinking that y'all are going to break up by the end. I mean, if you really and truly care about each other, and that's what I'm saying, like marriage can work in a way because that's two people Combining forces to make each other's life better if y'all are both on that same page. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it's not like that. Let's just keep it real. Well, you know, marriage, as I feel, is, is very outdated. And I feel that uh, we should normalize more being with a partner without having to go through a court system or whatever we go through to make it official. It's official when we... When we give each other whatever we give each other, a ring, a, a wristband, a watch, whatever the fuck it is, a kid, whatever you feel makes it official <laughs> is what makes it official. Can't no court or no judge or no piece of paper make anything more official to me than what I'm going to say it is. Period. Period. That's all it is to it. That's all it is to it. Now, one last one. Since we're on, you know, relationships and whatnot, all that, yeah. Can you truly forgive a cheater? Ooh. And see, this is a multi-layer one, people, because I'm going to give him another scenario here in a minute, and we really well, about to see. To that question, no, you cannot. Mm. You can forgive a cheater. You can forgive them. But getting back in a, in a partnership with them will be very unwise. Because oh, you yeah, have to, be, you have to think what what led them to cheat in the first place. It's like satisfaction. Whatever it is, status. Whatever it is, they better tell you what led to it because mm -hmm. it's like. But for, what answer is good enough? There's nothing. There's nothing. You stepped out on me. We went. We went through a talking stage. Well, you could have did that. I would have felt okay about. Okay, whatever. We were just talking. Yeah, we're not together yet. Then we committed. When you could have. When you knew, you knew what you were getting. We had sex a couple times. We went on a couple of dates. You know all about me. So you know what you're getting. And you committed. 
and you still did what you did. That's the issue. I don't have an issue with a woman cheating in a talking stage. I don't. It's a talking stage. You don't know what you're getting. Every, every day is new. It's a, it's a practice. You can fuck up if you want to. It's practice. When you make that commitment, you have a duty. You have a duty to uphold your standard and your statements you've made as far as commitment-wise. I don't entertain nobody else. I won't do this. Fucking blah. Are you really gonna do it? Can you stay from these parties? So can they have male with your home girls? No, no, no. Can you stay with these parties? Can, can can you can you ignore the all these niggas in your DM with liking your shit, three K likes and shit? Can you ignore that? Can you ignore the nigga pulling up, pulling up in the fucking BMW and shit and all that that you know is no fucking good? <laughs> But he has all this and that. Glitter, all this shit. All he the glam. It. Where's your brain? Where's your self-control? Where's your common sense? Because it's, it comes down to one thing. If you want to keep getting played, or, or, or you want to embrace something real, okay? It's one or the other. It's either you get played, you waste your time, or you're in something real. Or you're single. Okay? Period. Wait, time get wasted. You got something real. Or you're single. Mm. One of the two. I was with him for three years. You went out together, but I was with him for three, four years. Your time got fucking wasted. If you're not with him right now, your time got fucking wasted. You're not with him no more. He's done. He's gone. He's not coming back. He or she's not coming back. Mm. So what was that three or four years really about? What were you trying to accomplish? Did you learn? Were you Did putting you? yourself out on a limb that you weren't supposed to put yourself out on? Were you getting a little uh, <coughs> desperate? Thirsty? Were you settling before you really knew who this girl was? Were you giving this girl the benefit of the doubt before she deserved it? Mm. Yes, you were. Mm. Female? Same all those things I just said to that guy? Were you doing that? Yes, you were. Yeah, because that, that brings up the interesting point. And see, it gets it gets tough with it because, you know, it's a big debate whether, you know, once you get in a real relationship, and this is real, can men, can men and women have friends of the opposite sex while they're in a relationship? No, like, you know, a lot it won't of, work. I'm, I'm not having my girlfriend hang out with 6'3 Jeremy over here. What the fuck do you think they're doing? Oh, Jeremy, 6'3 Jeremy's talking about how you should stay with stay with Rome. He's the best guy for you. He's this, he's that. Hell no. This guy's paving the way for himself. So is she can only have female friends? What I guess she, so. What if she met him before you? You met him before me? Well, we need to all have a meeting. Me, him, and that guy, let's <laughs> have a meeting. And let's get Yo, to the bottom. Look him in his eye. Let's get to the bottom of how how you guys met. And I guarantee you, I'll know what I'll know the truth by then, because you can't hide it then. So there there could be some circumstance which you could see that it would be okay. Because like, what if they just they've known each other for forever? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Something I can like handle that. that. I can, and I've known people like that, and they really don't do anything with each other. They really yeah. don't. And that's a rare breed, bro. It's a rare breed. It's out there, but it's a rare breed. But it's possible. It's possible. I'm not going to say it's not possible. It's very possible. Yeah, because um, the last layer of it, right, is what what is your position? How do you react if you find out and not only did she cheat, but she cheated with one of your niggas, one of your close niggas? It's war. Do you hear me? Look, any woman out there, I'm gonna speak for all men. I, I, I'm, I'm usually good about. I don't want to speak for everybody. I'm speaking for every man out there that likes women. Okay. If you cheat on him with your homeboy, you're done. You're nothing to us. You're nothing more than a piece of fucking dirt on the bottom of our shoe. I promise you that, and we will seek revenge. By messing with some, by having sexual intercourse with a girl that's close to you. Hmm. It may be yeah. a sister, maybe a cousin, a best friend, an aunt, 
Oh, but dare I say a mother? Dare I say? <laughs> dare I say? It depends how hard. Oh, my, dare I say? It I'm depends sorry. on how hard that guy that I was cool with. It depends on how hard he fucking rocked your life. Okay, I promise you, nothing sweet out here. I don't take those things lightly. We guys don't take those things lightly. So the best thing to do, if you're in a relationship and you feel things getting still, you feel things kind of running its course. Talk just, to that guy. Or just leave, bro. At the end of the day, just you leave. You gotta talk to him. A text, a phone call, a Snapchat. Break it down anything. how it's not for you, though, no boy. Let that is know. more acceptable than just doing that. Because yeah, that's ridiculous. speaking as somebody, me personally, who has not experienced that level of it, but I have been cheated on. And then, you know, the person that she cheated on with was someone that I knew was relatively friends with. I wouldn't say great friends. But it was like, wow, you really, you, y'all made me look so dumb for so long. Like, that's the position I got put in, bruh. And, you know, it, it really is. It's just a learning experience. Uh, and it's fine. And, hey, I went out like that. I went out like that that time. Will I ever let that happen again? No. And that's what you got to know, you know. You have to bounce back. You can't put yourself in that situation anymore, all right? Because they're going to come to you talking about, oh, I'm sorry, it really wasn't like that. It was just a moment, and then things got carried away. No, none of that matters because if they was really for you, then no matter what happens, they're not going to be swayed. They won't be tempted, nothing like that. Now, what do you do with the homeboy? Because really and truly, I feel like in my mind, I'm more upset with the homie. Because, bro, bro, if if you did something like that, like that, like let's say I was with a chick for like a year and a half, right? We're doing our location. We're making short films. We're doing all these projects. Oh, you know, he, I, I have her in, you know, some, some acting role, something. Proximity begins. You know, we're meeting up for shoots all these weekends, you know, and then maybe I'm not there a couple times, and then boom. What do you do if your homie is that man that did that, that disrespected you in that way? I don't, I'm, I am not gonna fault my homie, because you know why? A nigga gonna be a nigga. No, bro. You know what? You bro, know what? You think know if what? it was if it was me. Think about that. Think about if you was really liking a chick. Like you were, you were in. You were in. I swear. You know what, bro? I'm I'm so real, bro. I promise I will not cut you off because I'm like, bro. bro. You help me with that bitch, bro. You know what, Cooper? I would You'll say, bro, that I exposed no, 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 really no, 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 I'll be like, you know, you know, whatever, but I'm like, bro, I know you the enforcer, so it's like, yeah, bro, true. you helped me it's realize not... the truth, you helped me crack the code, nothing was forced, these that hoes are for everybody, and that would ring in my head, but I swear <laughs> I would not cut you off over no bit, not in that situation, I wouldn't, because it's like, no, bro, she just showed who she was. You know, you didn't rape her. You didn't do anything no, like that's that. A, that's hey, all. That's that's real. She was she was a volunteer, baby. I, you know what I'm saying? So I mean, hey. I see what you're saying, but I don't know, bro. It's like I'm. I wouldn't. I don't. I honestly don't think I would cut you off either. But it would be like it would be It would take a minute. It would really take a minute. Now I probably would come around to your way, thinking after all, because now. Like I said, if she's really down for you, nothing would swear. So that that would expose what she was. Really now, about would I bring place. any more of my partners around you? No. Just knowing the fact that that could happen. But I would take that as a lesson learned. Okay, the hoes for everybody. Watch the hoes, and you probably shouldn't bring none of your girls that you like around Travis if you want to say it with him. That's what I would think. That's and right. you just gotta. <laughs> It is what it is, because you can't stop him from being who he was to pull her, because he's always going to be who he is. Same for me. So it's like, I can't tell him to not be him and be all insecure. That's, that looks weak. 
going on everywhere. Hey, that's my because, girl. Talk to her. Because that's, that's my girl. why. Don't talk to her. Like, because that's weird. why I was gonna say it is. It is interesting that you bring it up and you have that perspective. Because I would be so very, very wrong in my mind, and I could understand it if she ends up putting it on. You know, on me if she's sending out those vibes. Like, okay, I'm trying to, you know, step out. That does definitely soften the blow a bit. Does it negate it completely? No, it really doesn't. But you could understand it if, like, if he wasn't actively pursuing, and she keeps pressing him, eventually something probably will happen. Like, let's just keep it real. So, okay, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got to the bottom of that, though, digitally. All right, we're going to take a short intermission. We'll be right back with more Locations. All right, here we go. Herb got his comments. Shut up. Well, then find it. The comments from Irv Gotti on Drake, his impact of his latest album, and his thoughts on what it is doing to the state of hip hop. Clearly, he thinks that it is affecting it in a disparaging way, and that it is absolutely towards the detriment of real hip hop, in which he, he referenced someone like DMX, which would be considered more hardcore type rappers. More traditional type rappers, things like that. What are, What are your thoughts on just how he views Drake's album? And then it seems like, you know, I'm not. I'm. Our Gotti's comments were what they were, but it also seems like he used this moment as a chance to try and take shots at the whole new generation of rap as a whole. So what do you think about his comments as the the generations going dead based on the state well, of it right now? He just was surprised at most people that the best rapper in the game supposedly dropped a genre album that was not hip hop at all. Not close. Mm-mm. Not R and B, not none of that. Full dance hall. So, um he's an OG hip hop head. He's you know, he named names like Ja. Like ja Rule, uh, Jay Z, Ja Rule DMX. was not traditional hip hop. I will say that. But it was way more hip hop than that. But listen, this is he's just a, he's just an OG kind of, you know, kind of scared right now. Like, is this where the genre he grew up loving and grew up, you know, listening to, heading to? No. But what made him think like that is. This is the number one artist in the game. This is the number one rapper in the game right now. This is arguably the best rapper of all time right now. And he dedicated he did a whole... Say, he did say he gave him credit as like he would have that type of impact yeah. on rap as a whole. He dedicated a whole album. This GOAT rapper dedicated a whole album to a whole other genre that wasn't close to hip-hop. Dance hall. A more, a more, it, that's more close to salsa dance than anything. Like, you know, no, so it's, it's the UK dance hall garage sound, you know what I'm saying? The yeah. more gritty, rough, kind of unpolished dance hall that's mixed with some kind of rough beats at the same time. Well, it didn't hit for America. The numbers came out this week. He hit number one on Billboard, but mm. this is the lowest week in uh, first week sales he's had since 2015. Scorpion had 704,000 total week sales. CLB had like, I think like 400 or something. This one had 204,000 week sales. 
So this this shows you just how much of a drop off happened, you know. And you know, I want to get those correct facts for you guys. I have it right here on. Uh, shout out to XSL, the Twitter, spitting the facts, and um, here it is, right here. This is Drake's first week album sales in his career, 2009. Which was probably the fall off season, something like well, whatever he had, whatever that was before Thank Me Later, forty five thousand. So far gone. Yeah, it's so far gone. Yeah, forty five thousand. Twenty ten, Thank Me Later. He was Thank Me Later in on Ford, four hundred forty seven thousand. Twenty eleven, his album six hundred thirty one thousand. Twenty thirteen, six fifty eight k. Twenty fifteen, five thirty five k. Was that if you're reading this, it's too late? You think? You're a fan, you know this. So, <laughs> 20, 20, 2016, 852K. This guy's going fucking ballistic. What was that, 2017, five, 505K. 2018, Scorpion. But Scorpion. Scorpion had. The, the, the year before, 505K. The year after, 732K. Scorpion. The, the side right. A, side B. COB, 613K. Okay, little drop off. We know the little. Ooh. Honestly, never mind. 204K? That's the worst first week album sales you had, Drake, since 2009. Since 2009? Since so far. Since that little. Since, hold on. Since that mixtape you dropped is 2009. <laughs> oh, but hey, oh gosh, I I was tripping. Oh god, I, now I 200k a week is career changing for most rappers. But Drake, the trajectory you've been on, this is the lowest first week sales you had in over a decade, over 10 years. This is like 12 years. And you got a 204k week album. Before this, the lowest before that was 45k. Like the said, highest you you peaked, you peaked 852k and, in one and week. And that was and that was views, where the actual sales when it was coming out currently said that you was 1.2 mil first week. Mm. Uh, a whole million. What happened? Above this last album. And I don't think y'all quite understand. We're, we're both Drake fans, right? Yes. Okay, would you not both say that we both agree that this nigga is possibly... No, not possibly. He is the greatest rapper of all yes, time. Yes, he is. He's the GOAT. More hits than the Beatles. All these hits. The catalog is too great. The projects are too great. The hits. If it's fire, it's fire. Y'all know that. The... The level that he just lives at in everybody's mind. Everybody's been checking for these projects for over a decade. We literally talked about 2009. That was our freshman year of high school. Of high school. This man is... We've grown up with this man. We became men. I told my story and made his story. That's us. And this is where we are in 2022. <laughs> hey, you know, Drake, this can either be the biggest wake up call in his career or I hope so. I hope so. And it's it's not like I'm against experimental albums. I'm not. I'm really not. I do honestly think that more life aged better than a lot of people give it credit for. I'll say that I think that's one of the, his more replayable albums in terms of start to finish. But when you're when you're coming off of the back of CLB, which you already made us wait so long and it was delayed multiple and multiple times to get to, and it was what it was, we needed that bounce back. We needed the comeback. Comeback season. We needed that man to show up once more, remind everybody exactly who it was. Especially, let's set the context. Set the context. J. Cole dropped an album last year. 
The nigga everybody claims is top three, number three. Who knows? Do we even remember the name of that album? I think it's called The Off Season. Bruh, they should have taken The Off Season. Bro, that's over 300,000 less sales in the first week than Sitter. Kendrick Bible. Lamar. What was it? 1,500 plus days? Something like that? Does he drop the album? You know people was fiending for his shit. And you got the delusional stands out there that's still riding with Mr. Morale and the big steppers. <laughs> but yeah. we know what that was too. You're not going back to listen to it. Period. End of story. Mm -mm. Never would I have imagined in my adult life would I have ever imagined that you the GOAT, the greatest of all time, would follow up a mediocre project with an even more so subpar piece of art that you have been known to release. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Do not tell me this is not his worst album. Where does this rank in his albums? Let's let's rank them right now. It's last. It's second to last. It's, it's last and the one before this, I think I would have to say more life right before that. CLB is the second worst album. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that. That's, but, that's clear. That's Come on, dog. That's clear. You know that too. I know that, you know... I'm more, I, other music that I listen to is more kind of dance hall based. I will say that. I, okay, I'm up front with that. So path. I appreciate it. We got the song with Jay-Z. We got the song with Lil Durk. There's some hits. But okay, I guess you can say The song with Jay-Z that had come out months beforehand. Drake. The guy that you arguably lost ever, the only guy you ever lost a beef to has is killing it right now let me tell Ooh, you no, that's no. let me push tell you push it t is killing it he's context. he is coming with the production the bars the flow the vibes everything you think of but you can play him around any audience right now universally they, recognized tom brady when grammy of, hey go the goat in football is saying what he listens to a 44 year old white man people <laughs> I, I don't mean to understate that I don't doubt that Brady's in it like the real niggas is that's a 44 year old white man recognizing look Drake I believe in you man I believe that you got something to stash I hear all these, uh, I hear all these rappers in the interviews saying they got all these songs with you I know you're not doing dance hall all with them so look I know you smart guy. You got a smart team. Before 2022 is over, Redemption. Another album? Redemption's on my mind when I'm thinking about you. Like, bro. Yeah. I need you to come back with the... I don't mind the R&B three or four times on the album. I don't mind. That's who you are. You're going to give us that. Right. I don't mind that. Honestly, I, Overdrive is more R&B as opposed to hip hop, and I would say that's the one that song, crazy that standout song. song. You, you, a monster. You put that song. On, you put that song on Take Care. That's one of the best songs. That's one a of good the song. best. One. That's, that's one a of great the, song. One of the best songs you released in years. So it just it just Drake Dance Hall. You tried it. Come on back. R&B rap. I'm here. I'm still here. I'm still gonna support. I'm still gonna text this nigga. Two or three in the morning when you drop something, still wanna do it. But you have to come back home and be who you are. Please, Aubrey, please do this for us, please. Mm. To have to do that. To have to do all of that. Mm. I mean I'll say it like this. Once you've built up a certain legacy, right? There's only you. There's basically nothing you can do to unmake that legacy, right? Mm -hmm. For the most part, we separate parts of careers for whatever field. 
but we're reaching a point, right, where if your next album does not hit, you're going to number one, not to me, but to the public, you'll open a stronger argument that you are not the GOAT. And like I said, I will not believe that. But you'll open that argument for people because they will say these other people in the debate had no bad projects. That's what they will say. I already know. That's what the narrative is going to be. But but you've also opened the door. If this next project don't hit, dog, you've opened the door to where we will have to strip the number one from you and then the, the title has to stay vacant for a minute and wait for someone to come and claim it and really separate themselves. And I hate to say, I don't think y'all understand how much it makes me upset to have to say these words. I literally never thought I had to say anything remotely like this. But I mean, the facts are the facts. I can't, as an objective man, and I try and give y'all the real every time. I, tr I say I'm not biased, and I really try and mean that. I love this nigga. I grew up to this nigga. If he don't come with it on this next one, conversations will be had. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, his first six albums cannot be erased. Legacy can't, can't, be, can't be unmade. Legacy can't be unmade. That's, the best I said six, that. that's one of the best six album runs in music history. Whether you like it or not. Probably the best. You talking about six I albums? I mean, probably. No, deep. no. Is Michael Jackson deep? didn't. Michael Jackson didn't have a six album run. Okay, you talking about a six album run? Mm. My goodness, that's that six album run of number ones. I told you those first week sales. The worst one since two thousand nine was two hundred k. He dropped one literally every year but 2014. Since 2009. Every year but 2014. You're a GOAT, Drake. You're a GOAT. You have to come back home and figure out a way to evolve your roots. Evolve your roots. You're a smart man. And if you ever hear this clip, I know you know what I'm talking about. Evolve your roots. I gotta say about that. All right, so you know, last thing on the the rap side. Um, what? So since we were talking about the all time debate, and you know, we already said Drake is number one. I mean, that's just that's where it is. All right, y'all, y'all, I'm we're letting you know right off the top. All right, whether that's gonna come into question later, I don't know. Who knows? Who are the greatest rappers of all time? You can try and name three or four, whatever order you feel, and then name the three or four that's it right now. All time? All time. For me, for me, I say Drake. I say Biggie Smalls. And after that, I think the gap is very wide. No disrespect to Tupac. No disrespect to Tupac. He's not in my top five. <laughs> he's not. He's right outside looking right in. I think he's at the number six spot, to be quite honest. Number three for me is Jay-Z. I think that's clear, bro. The dominance over so many years, bro. He's he's still releasing albums to this day. We thought he was done with Magna Carta, Holy Grail. He comes out with 444. The story of OJ. I'm not black, I'm OJ. Mm. Oh. Okay. Mm. And number four for me. And I don't think... I think he's one of the more disrespected people. This... You could disqualify me if you want based on what type of career he had because he was some he's tied to somebody else. That's 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 just the fact of the matter. It's Andre 3000. I think skill-wise 
basically no one can touch it. I honestly think that. Skill wise. Who is really who do you who would you say can just out rap Andre three thousand? Come on, be with be real with me, Rome. Be real. Uh, I gotta say, okay. Let me see my You top. may not have him in your top top four or five like me, but who would you just say can just flatly, no question, can out rap Andre three thousand? I'll say J. Cole could. Okay, now. So that's crazy. That's okay, crazy. Okay, act like that man ain't, ain't said something every time he ever stepped Jay up. J. Cole track. would be lucky to okay, be in the top all right. 10. My top five. One, I have Notorious B.I.G. Two, Drake. Three, Tupac. Four, J. Cole. Five. Wait, 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 wait. So Drake is not the greatest rapper of all time. He's up there. He's not quite. He's not past Biggie to me. Not yet. Not yet. So I got Biggie Smalls, Drake. He's number two. He can pass it any album. Now he could have passed. Well, see, it. I, I see he, he now. That's where. That's why I want to. I want to push back. I want to push back. Did you not say that Drake had the greatest six album run of anybody in history? Biggie Smalls is my second favorite. He is my GOAT before Drake came around. Wait, wait, wait. Biggie and Drake he, is picking hairs, man. It's picking hairs. So it's you say on hairs. any days, it, like, maybe one day it could be Drake. Maybe Let's one day like it's Biggie. The best two albums, or do you, would you say it's definitive? The best two album stretch one I, run I've ever seen was Biggie Smalls. But I understand it. I understand it. But as you, I understand the music. But we comparing two to six. Biggie Smalls, Drake, Tupac, J. Cole, Lil Wayne. That's my top five. Honorable mention, five and six. I mean six and six and seven, honorable mention. Nas. And I'll have I'm surprised you didn't have Nas in your top four. Him and J. Cole are so alike, but J. Cole. Oh, wow. more. Now how is Nas not better than J. Cole? Tell me that, that. and I'm Jay not Cole. even, I'm not even the and big. And number seven, the big Cole number guy. seven, I'll have Kanye West, and number seven, I would say for his impact, Jay Z's top ten. He's like he's 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 eight through ten, one of those two. <laughs> he's eight but, through ten. He's eight through ten. And uh, I gotta wow. have I gotta have Big Daddy wow. Kane because I'm a real OG rapper, I'm OG uh, rap head. Big Daddy Kane's in there, uh, and Rock Kim's in there for sure. <laughs> So that that nigga that you you say is you know up in your upper echelon, you know he kind of got put on by Jay Z, right? Who Kanye? Okay, but what does that mean? Little Wayne, uh, Drake got put on by Little Wayne. Okay, so we're like just gonna rapper. we're gonna so that we're really gonna five. so so Kanye is a better rapper than Jay Z. I feel like he is, yes. Okay. I do. I really do. All right. Well, I'm not gonna waste the time. I right, really do. That, that's and he came upon Rock Nation bigger than us. The Black saying. Album, the Blueprint, like stuff. Hey, Jay Z. Who thing. filled the Who filled the void when Jay when when Biggie and Tupac was gone? Who did better than Watch the Throne? The album Jay Z and Kanye collabed what? on. Kanye fucking ate Jay Z on Watch the Throne. Niggas Stop in Paris. Stop it. Niggas no, in Paris. No, no, that's where you're. You Murdered lost excellence. me. You have Murdered lost me. Gotta Otis. Have Oh, stop. Otis. Made it in America. Made it in America. No, no church in the wild. I got Kanye. No, bro. That's crazy. I that's got Kanye. crazy. I got Kanye. Hey, whatever. We're we going to have to. I, hey, we going to have to agree to disagree on that. It's y'all. Kanye it West. Is, well, I'll say this. It is your list. So, you know, yours is going to be different than mine. Obviously, you could probably go in on my Andre 3000 pick. He's, he's a probably too could. A little too hot. He has done enough. Say on that, his own. But he has done enough. And enough that's why I said off the top. But does, does he have a solo him. album? He doesn't. He does doesn't. That, that's that's a detriment he doesn't. right there. That's a detriment. And there's a lot of guys that have been in groups that have solo albums. Quavo's got a solo album. Like you got to get a solo album in there somewhere. As, as somebody, it's his caliber. I feel like it's him running from the, the pressure of of the, of the things that's calling for him. Honestly, like, I mean, I how can a guy like that with that talent have a solo album yet? 
I'm sorry. Again, it sounds like say, somebody's kind of scared again, of the I lights. Say, who can who can out rap him? Who, uh, someone's just afraid. J Cole, Lil Wayne got rap him. Do you think you don't think Lil Wayne got rap RG three thousand? No. Lil no. Wayne's a fucking rap maniac. No. Okay, well, you can think that I, I really do my research. I really know what these guys are doing now. And I think if Man, you I really know, ask so. Lil Wayne, he would give you the same answer. Uh, but whatever. hey, you whatever. Know, Lil Wayne was the best rapper that's... alive. Okay. And Lil Wayne's only the what? He's the best rapper. He, he's. He's one of the he's, best he's rappers. The best. No, no, no. He's not one. Of the, he's you said one he's of the, the best. best. No, you said he's the best. He's one of the best you said he's alive. the best. <laughs> okay, now we understand where he really stands. <laughs> His whole list invalidated. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. Man, come on, Lil Wayne. All right, so you number five. You number five, bro. Ridiculous. Yeah, but it's all right. Late, well, we should... we're done with that. So next time, we're gonna come to y'all with a very special other Drake topic. Yes. With the boy weekend involved, in which we will be arguing which album was better slash more impactful. Take care by Drake or Starboy by The Weeknd. Of course, he's going on the side of Weekend. I'm going on the side of Drake. Yeah, I'm the you one that's got Drake truth. as the number one. You know the truth. He ain't really you know riding truth. for the man. You know the truth. But. You know we're the truth. See. You know Take Care is better. You know. You know. We're going to see you know. when we get there. It has been your boy t Rob, and this is... Wrong. Wrong me wrong, man. Wrong me wrong. It's been good. It's been good. It's been yes, good. sir. Catch y'all next time. It's me, but you ever mind. Peace.